what is up everyone? This was probably the last video anyone was expecting, but I know it seems totally random. I'm going to completely rearrange my office. And it's kind of spontaneous, but kind of planned at the same time. Because I'm going to go through a few things in this video that I've wanted to say for a while, but I just haven't been able to bring myself to say them. Uh, and it's all in regards to my setup, pretty much. Now, I know a few of you are going to be extremely disappointed to see that this is another kind of video, another kind of project video that is not the network series. I am really sorry about that, but as I've said before, the next part, whatever the next part is, part six, part seven, whatever part we're on now, is well and truly in the works and it will continue to be in the works. Um, and it's not gonna be one of those things that I don't finish because I've got no choice, I have to finish it. I've got a half finished network at home and I'm not gonna be able to live with it forever. So it will get finished. This is a separate project and I've gotta do this as well. <laughs> so I kind of inspired myself to look at my whole office when I did this. The other day I had a free hour or so and I decided to tackle my shelves. Well, most of them. Uh, I know it's still a little shambolic, but I moved a lot of the old boxes and things up to the attic and I pretty much kept just the stuff that I need down here. Um, with the exception of a few little things, all of these guys up here are waiting to have parts swapped in and out of them. Every time I go to a car boot sale, I buy a Dalek and swap in their arms and stuff so that um, I can have nice functioning Daleks with all of their limbs. So that's why there are a load of Daleks up there. And uh, yeah, just random bits just waiting. But this is the main source of the organization, the four boxes full of different kinds of cables and whatnot. It's something I've wanted to do for a long time. And I will hopefully add two more boxes very soon because the shelf that will eventually be going above my workbench will hold all of this small stuff all of these little bits and bobs and parts and things will all be up there along with tools and various other things that are scattered all over the place so i'll have more space for even more boxes and then i've got handy space along the side so i've got all my cameras down there in their cases that's kind of handy um i've got all of my screen cleaning and various cleaning uh, there's canned uh, cream cleaner back there, also canned air, WD-40, some glue, just general handy stuff there. And um, yeah, I'm really pleased with this organisation, but there is one aspect of my office that really displeases me, and that is anything, basically anything from here over. It all, it is all, it is all changing. It's got to change. To prepare myself for this video, I went back and watched my office series, at least bits of it. And... As I was building it, I could hear the kind of compromises I was making. I, I remember my original vision for my setup, and I remember the battles that I came across and the compromises that I made. And one of them was a massive, massive audio compromise. And there are a couple of things that is very, very, very difficult um, about this setup. So really quickly, because I want to get ripping stuff apart right now, um, the audio compromise, you guys will probably know, the audio compromise is indeed the placement of the speakers. It turns out that these speakers were way too big and I thought I could get three screens across this large desk and I thought I could also get the speakers way back alongside the other screens. Um, but I never was able to do that. The room is simply not wide enough. As you can see, the speakers are pretty much against either wall. Um, it's ridiculous. It's way too big. It's stupid. It is stupid. And I, I'm, I guess I'm growing up. I don't know, but I can't remember if I ever thought this was okay because it doesn't sound good. The speakers are way too close to the walls. They're way too, um, side on and I've just kind of learned to live with it, but I've never liked it. Never ever. So there's that, and you guys may be able to tell that I'm being really blunt in this video about my setup, but I'm allowed to be because I'm the one that planned it and put it together, so I can be as harsh as I like. Um, so yeah, I hate the way this setup sounds, and I have done since I put it together. And it's a shame because this is quite good quality equipment, and it's just going to waste. So I will indeed be selling these speakers, more on that later on. So continuing with audio, uh, this mixing desk, absolutely lovely bit of kit, really nice. It's a, it works fantastically as an audio interface, but I'll also be selling this. Reason number one, it's way too big for what I need. When I first planned the audio setup, it was the perfect size because I had three input channels and I wanted insert points and I wanted to be able to route stuff around an auxiliary send. 
I've never done any of that stuff, really. I mean, I've used um, a compressor on the insert point of this microphone over here, um, and it's very, very nice having hardware compression on this. It's a treat because it means that no matter where within the system I use my microphone, whether that's on Skype or on a QuickTime recording or wherever, I've always got hardware compression going in, so it sounds lovely and smooth when it goes in. But I'll be taking that away. It's lovely to have it, but it takes up way too much space. Uh, I'll be ditching the audio rack. Ditching this, uh, this has slowly been going downhill. The power switch is dodgy, the voltage meter um, has broken. A couple of the, I say a couple, both of the bulbs are gone I think, are they? No, just one of them. One bulb is still working. Um, what else? I'm not convinced it's actually giving me any benefit, so we're going to ditch that. Ditching the compressor. I ditched the radio mic, it's in work, ditched it a long time ago. I uh, wasn't using it anyway. The plan I wanted to use that for never worked out. Um, this is too big, I want to get a smaller audio interface. The second reason I want to get rid of this is to ditch Firewire. This is the only Firewire device I have left on my main setup and it means that I have to have a Firewire card in my Hackintosh devoting a valuable PCI slot to Firewire just for this mixing desk. And considering I don't really use it for anything other than a simple stereo output and a single channel input, I can get a way smaller audio interface that works over USB and that's what I'm going to do. And that means I can hide it like under the desk or something and not have this massive lump that's just gathering dust on top of the desk. So the harshness is continuing, but I'm ditching the mixer. And finally, the biggest change to the setup, the biggest of them all, I will be going from three displays to two displays. Now, this is actually a forced change. I love having three displays. I love it. I really do. But due to the new location of my desk, I'm kind of going to have to and, d and due, to what I want, due to what I want to put on the desk, I kind of have to drop down to two displays. So what I'm going to do is this display, this one specifically, the one that still has the Apple EyeSight uh, attachment attached to it, that display will be moving over here to my workbench setup. That will be my new test monitor and hopefully I'll get a wall bracket for it or something. And then I'll be using these two displays. Why that one specifically? Well. That was the very first one I bought back in 2012 when I still lived at my parents' house. I bought it for the home studio, lovely monitor. Then further down the line, quite a few years ago now, a buddy of mine, Todd, you guys will know him as Todd's Nerd Cave. He's in my featured channels list. Go and check out his videos. He does awesome videos. Uh, he gifted me two more monitors. And these are just one of the most incredible gifts I've ever received in my life. They turned up completely randomly. Um, it was so, so generous of him. I just could not believe it. But because these ones were newer than this one, the colour, temperature of the monitors has always been slightly different. These two that I got from Todd are far superior. They're a lot more neutral. This one has always been a lot more purpley pinky. So I'm going to take that one. Within its own right, that's a really nice looking monitor. Uh, but when you compare the three, that one is different. So these will be the two on my main setup now that I got from Todd. And we will be moving that over there. That's kind of the main change with the gear. Obviously we're going to delve into this deeper and we're going to go into the nitty gritty of cabling and power and all that fun stuff that I usually ramble on about. But where's, where's the desk going? Well one thing I absolutely despise about this setup is the fact that I can't get to my window. It's a pain for cleaning because I can't clean the window easily. I can't clean the window sill easily. I can't clean the blind easily. But cleaning aside, it is very, very difficult to open and close the windows. And one thing that I hate is the fact that I need to access the windows so often because pretty much 24 hours a day, this window is open because I have the server rack running. It gets warm in here. So that one's always open a crack. And every time I want to record, because the garden is right there and there are houses right there. I always close the window because I'm very aware of the fact that everybody down there can hear what I'm saying if the window is open. So I always lean over to close the window. So when I make a video, I can find myself opening and closing it sometimes seven, eight, nine times in one video. And I have to lean over this massive setup to do it. It's a complete pain. So due to access for the window and the fact that I want to shrink down the whole setup. By the way, I also hate the symmetry. Um, that's one thing I don't like about a triple monitor setup. It makes the setup very symmetrical and with the speakers there, it kind of adds to it. It may look cool to some of you guys, but to me, the symmetry at the end of the room there is just kind of 
just killing it for me. I'd prefer things to be broken up in a more natural looking way. That just looks, I, I don't know, kind of looks like a spaceship cockpit or whatever. Um, but anyway, what I'm going to try and do is get the desk, pull it back to here and push it over so that the new walkway to the desk will be this way and I will sit behind it. So the whole desk is going to be rotated 180 degrees so that the front of it is over there. Uh, it doesn't, it wouldn't normally make a difference, but I've got a cable organizer screw to the bottom at the back, so it will have to be rotated. I'm going to ditch this whole audio rack. This complete thing is going, meaning that this black thing can go. Also, this black thing can go because I will be putting my machine on top of the desk. It'll be against this wall, and that's kind of the main reason why I've got to ditch the three monitors. Also, I want to have space to put speakers on the desk. I don't want to use speaker stands. So for those two reasons, I... I'm going down to two monitors and all the reasons I described. Um, but yeah, that's going on the desk. It's going to look sick and I can't wait. At least I hope it looks sick. Um, so I'll be selling off this gear. I'll be making a bit of a profit as I do this because um, I will be buying gear that is nowhere near in the same class. These monitors were fairly expensive. This mixing desk was fairly expensive. I'll be selling them off um, at an okay price, a fair price that will hopefully sell them quick but also get me a nice bit of cash. I'll hopefully only reinvest half of that money into the new audio setup because all I want is a simple one or two channel audio interface uh, with two channel return from the machine and uh, a really, really basic pair of monitors. I've been doing some research on some speakers. You can get some nice pairs of fairly decent speakers for under 100 quid today. Um, I'm looking at a pair of Persona speakers. I'm also looking at a pair of Mackies, but I'm kind of shying away from those. Uh, but yeah, we'll talk more about that soon. Let's just, let's delve in. I'm going to start ripping things apart, taking stuff off the setup. We're going to do some sort of like time lapse music stuff, I guess. Mega bonus, I just found a £15 iTunes card that I lost. Awesome. All of this stuff is really kind of intertwined together. Um, I'm going to do some off-camera decabling for fear of filling up my hard drives even more. Um, yeah, I'll give you guys an update when there's something cool to see. Okay, so everything is out of the cable tidy area. Um, all of those cables are just attached to the back of this audio rack, so they'll move when that moves. And now all I've got is the bundle that. I'm still really impressed with um, the cable management. I was always really happy with the way it turned out at the back of the system itself. So um, yeah, time to pull this loose and go from there. So I'm going to attempt the main desk rotation. Hopefully got enough space to do it. Uh, still got some cables under there and it's all dusty and everything, but we're just going to see if this theory is going to work. So welcome to the birth of my new setup. This is what it will look like. We have got two monitors. I'm now facing the rest of the room. There's my Hackintosh. And this desk is right up against that desk. And yeah, there's loads of space, I think. I'll only be able to judge it properly when I get my chair back here, but like an idiot, I moved the desk before bringing the chair back. So that's gonna be a bit of a challenge. Um, obviously, all of these items are gonna go somewhere else because this will be the main walkway now. So I pretty much need all three of those cabinets to be somewhere else. This is going um, because obviously I need space. So the chair fits absolutely perfectly. Um, it does look a bit sort of crammed in there, but it's not. It's got a lot of free space to move around. 
um, which is great so I can still spin around and whatnot. It's not completely wedged up against the radiator. It's Thursday today and it's definitely the most stupid evening to do this on because it's always busy on a Thursday. A few things happen, um, most notably Jess goes out on a Thursday so I've got the kids. So I was a complete idiot for ripping this setup apart because I knew I wouldn't be able to finish it tonight. And also, um, I do a big update to the website, my work website, on every Thursday night because the beginning of the new cinema week is on Friday. So all of the changes happen on Thursday. I take off all the old content, move all the new releases into the spotlight and just, just rearrange everything. And it's a couple of hours work that I spend on this, uh, on this machine every Thursday, um, as well as doing some rescheduling of Facebook posts and, and various things like that. Um, it's like the start of the, the advertising week, if that makes sense. But anyway, I've kind of ripped this setup apart now. I won't get it up and running today, so stupid idiot. It was a completely rubbish day to do it on, but I had a window. I had a window to delve into it, so at least progress is being made. All right, guys, I am back. It is the next morning, and I am feeling refreshed, ready to tackle this. Uh, hope to get the majority of it done today. Maybe I won't get the setup actually wired in, um, but that's kind of the least of my concerns at the moment. It was a pain in the ass yesterday, but I've got my MacBook. It's not a huge problem. Um, I just want to get this cleared and sort of functional. The only annoyance is I'm going to obviously have this studio equipment hanging around for a little while while it sells. So if I can clean it up, get some photos of it today and get it on Facebook, um, possibly list it on eBay for collection only. I can't do PayPal at the moment, which is a pain, so I can't offer um, uh, PayPal. So posting it is a little bit of a, a little bit of an annoyance because I'd have to find an alternative payment method. It's just a hassle for everybody. So yeah, I'll hopefully be able to sell it without the use of PayPal. Uh, that would be ideal. Um, but yes, I am going to basically move most of this stuff out onto the landing right now because I'm gonna hoover the office. I hoovered all back here yesterday, so all of this is nice, um, although it will need doing again because as I dust things down, obviously the dust will land on the floor and whatnot. I only did a rough job, but it's pretty much, it's okay for now. Um, so yeah, move everything out, hoover the room, clean up all the stuff, move it back in in a logical order, try and tidy up as I go, and just generally get a, a sort of usable room back. So now we can start to get a feel for how the room is going to be. Um, it's a bit tighter there than I'd like, but having this turned is kind of like the perfect place for it, really. Um, I need to sort all my paperwork into the files and just make everything more organised, but uh, it's just all going to sit there for now. So the floor itself is now clear. I can bring the hoover in, hoover it, do a rough job. I've got all of my cabling on on the chair. Um, I'll wheel the chair out of the way, do a rough hoover job behind. Just, you know, basic for now until I can get a chance to sort all this and then properly hoover it once it's all in. But what I want to do is just get the bulk of the hoovering done. Unfortunately, I've got this XLR cable stuck underneath my safe because the safe was put in after the XLR cable. The safe will have to move anyway because it is now like completely out in the open, whereas before it was covered by several pieces of furniture. So that'll be moved. Um, what else was I going to say? Yeah, all of this is now clear, so I can begin uh, wiring up the setup. I think once I hoover, that's the most logical thing to do. But of course, I've got a lot of stuff all over the desk. So what I need to do first is clear the desk and uh, wipe it down because it's seriously, seriously dusty. But there's not a lot of stuff up here anyway. Just got to find homes for this stuff temporarily. Um, I've moved the microphone clamp onto the desk. It's a little bit worse for wear, actually. I'm not too sure why it's all loose and rickety, but I think it may need a little bit of looking at. I think the springs may have stretched um, or something's going on with it. It's pretty cheap anyway, so if it continues to be a problem, I'll purchase a new one. And talking of purchasing new, I could, in theory, purchase the new audio system today. Um, I could order it, and then it would be in time for next weekend, which I assume will be when I'll complete this. So I'll think about that. I'll double-check that that's the stuff that I want, because 
I want to be sure, I don't want to be chopping and changing things all the time, I just want this to be my setup now. I just want it to be easy, simple and functional and not over the top. So that's what I'm going for. And I think a lot of you guys really, really appreciate that. Um, there are a lot of comments on my office series that were like, um, wow, this is really over the top and stuff. And yeah, I guess, I guess it was. There was nothing in the setup that I like seriously never kind of used. There was some of the audio stuff that I neglected, but all of the ideas were there in the first place. It was just stuff that didn't really happen. So I don't regret the old setup. I'm just, I'm just happy to be moving on from it because this is a lot simpler. I just had to flip the desk. We had a quick little leg malfunction and, um, you know, every single time, you know, thank you to this, this lovely comment from someone here on this YouTube video, just extremely helpful. Um, there are people to help you out there with everything, which is my, probably my favorite thing about the internet. It's a really simple fix. And now my leg is working perfectly. So I'm gonna get this leveled out and continue with the plan. We now have something that resembles some form of setup and I am very, very pleased. I've dusted everything, wiped everything down. Everything is nice and clean. Um, I'll give the screens themselves a final going over right at the very end. Uh, but as you can see, super nice, super clean. It's great to get the keyboard away from the front of the desk because uh, this keyboard, the music keyboard, <laughs> Uh, because when I added it, the typing position wasn't to my liking. Um, a lot of people comment on this, not on YouTube, but in real life, uh, about where I have my keyboard. And this is so comfortable for me, having it sort of miles away. Um, I'm a very, very capable touch typist. I never, ever need to look at the keyboard for any key on the keyboard. Um, so it's just miles away. I have my arms all the way outstretched from where I sit and it's really, really comfortable. Um, so that's that. The two spaces here and here, I'm really hoping that the speakers I've chosen are gonna fit very nicely there. So just one there, one there, tiny bit of a tilt up towards me and just a very clean, basic setup. And as for the rest of the desk, that's it. Nothing else will be going on here. Uh, obviously, you've got the webcam on top of the monitor. We've got my super drive and my scratch disc here. I'm going to put a bit of Velcro there to hold it down. Um, obviously, my Hackintosh, the microphone, and if I want it, I just pick it up and swing it round. I've fiddled with it ever so slightly, and it's now a fair bit better. Um, I just need to dust off the stand because that's the only thing I haven't dusted um, that's been put back on. I've washed this so it's now looking as good as new, nearly, although on the camera you can see a lot more than you can in real life. Um, I think I will need a new one fairly soon. It's feeling a bit rough and kind of used. Let's go back here. I have put the main surge protector in place and as you guys can see the cable feeding that fits perfectly down alongside the very badly installed laminate flooring and up to the power socket up there. So something that I was never able to do before was turn my setup completely off. But now every time I leave my setup, I can just flip the switch on the wall and kill power to everything, which will make me very, very happy. Um, I wasn't able to do it before because of course the socket was miles away underneath the desk. So there's the surge protector standing there and that will provide ample power for everything that I need, along with the second and only other plug board slash extension that's gonna be on the setup, and that is this black six-way that's sitting in this cable management thing. Um, I kind of wish now, if, if, I was, if I was doing this right at the very beginning, I'd have moved this cable management holder all the way up just about an inch and a half toward this um, metal piece so that it was in more, it would hide things slightly more, but when you're standing up, you can't see it. So I'm completely fine with that. I'll get everything wrapped into here neatly. Obviously this will just be power for the two monitors, um, the speakers when they come. Sorry about that folks, insert the classic IMNC line. I ran out of space on my SD card. Uh, anyway, yeah, this six way will be powering the monitors, the speakers, and probably not a lot else. The audio interface is bus powered, which is sweet. Uh, at least I think it is. So 
Or it may not be actually, come to think of it. It may use a transformer. But either way, it doesn't matter. I'll have plenty of power here for all of those things. Uh, obviously, I've got the XLR running over from the microphone. That's sitting along here at the moment. Not sure where I'm going to put the audio interface. Um, obviously, the volume control on the interface will be the main volume control for my setup. But the speakers also have volume control on the front. So I don't necessarily need to have it on the desktop. Um, but I could just have it sitting here or wherever. But part of me really wants to, if the volume control on the speakers is nice and easy to control, um, what I may do is mount the audio interface underneath the desk. And another item that I might do that with is my USB hub, my USB 3.0 hub, this guy. And the reason that I may do that is because it's just an awful looking bit of kit to have cluttering the top of the desk. So, yeah, especially because I need stuff permanently plugged into it, because I only have four available USB 3s on there. As you guys know, I never got the onboard working. Um, despite the fact that people sent me a lot of tutorials and helpful advice, thank you so much, guys. I just never got around to getting it working, and that PCI card works absolutely flawlessly, so I didn't want to fiddle with it any further. We'll talk Hackintosh in the future because I'm a couple of operating systems behind. It will need addressing, but let's get a functional setup first. And uh, I'm gonna stop talking now and plug some more things in so we actually get some progress. We are up and running. Absolutely everything is plugged in. Obviously not including audio because I don't have that stuff yet, but we are looking good. Uh, I've done a good chunk of the cable management, so what we've got going back here is a nice single strand of cabling, uh, including the keyboard USB. Uh, the reason there's so many cables here is because I'm using the USB hub for the keyboard and mouse, so they go out and then back in, but it's a nice solid clump. Any slack is just held in the cable management thing under here. Then this guy, we've of course got the cables, including the mouse cable. That's where I've hooked it onto. Um, I don't put it through the monitor stand because it gives restriction when I move the mouse. Um, I like the cable to be completely free on the desk. When there's a speaker here, it will be a little bit squashed in, so hopefully I don't feel any of that resistance on the cable. Really, really dislike that. I may look for a wireless solution, to be perfectly honest, folks, because uh, I've had a wired mouse on my setup the whole time, but. I don't play any games or anything like that, anything that requires a, a really any benefit to a wired mouse on this setup um, anymore. So I want a new mouse anyway, because the scroll wheel on this one is uh, getting really rough. So I think I might look for a good wireless solution. But uh, anyway, that'll be a conversation for another day. Here we got the cabling coming down from that monitor, going into the cable organization doodad thingy. Um, I haven't done this part yet. I will tie all of these back into a clump. I just wanted to make sure everything worked first. We've only got two plugs down there. We've just got this six-way and um, the machine itself. And the one really cool thing is I've decided, you guys can see a transformer here, that's for my USB hub, and I have decided to mount that underneath the desk. And I've done it in quite an interesting way so that it doesn't poke out and I don't um, rip it off. I have done it sideways. So, as you guys can see, there you go. There's my SD card reader. So when I want to put an SD card in, bang, I just plug it in there. Obviously, I'll tie back all of these cables. This is just my webcam plugged into the USB hub. Um, this is something that I don't need anymore. Or is it? No. This is something I don't need. That was there, just in case. Um, so, it's all worked out. I've got my iPod up here. That's plugged in, I've got the SuperDrive plugged in, I've got my scratch disk plugged in. Uh, everything is working, keyboard, mouse, webcam, that's plugged into the USB hub here. I think I just said that. Loads and loads of free USB ports. So that's really good. This is a nice powered hub, so plenty of juice in there. Also got a free USB 3.0 on the back of the Hackintosh. Um, no, you, no free USB 2s apart from these two on the side, so um, they'll be they'll also come in handy. I haven't hooked up the USB hub on this monitor. I did on the old setup. I had all three going, or maybe two, two or three, um, but I see no need because that's just extra cabling, and I don't really have anything I need to plug in USB there. 
Obviously the interface will plug in USB. I can easily route that cable underneath, plug it in the hub, um, or plug it straight in the back, whatever works best. But yeah, I'm up and running. Check this out, folks. It is Sunday and my package has arrived. So, turns out they must have got some stock in early or whatever. This is indeed my audio interface. So no speakers yet, but it's nice to get the interface here because I can get all of the cabling in place. Here it is, brand new. Focusrite Scarlett 2i2, second generation, two in, two out USB audio interface. Nice. Oh yeah. That's looking good. And we've also got the signature red USB cable, which is very nice. This is a really nicely built bit of kit. It's quality feeling all the way through. Really nice feeling pots. Lovely rubber feet on the bottom. Stop it sliding. Look at that. Oh yeah, nice. So it's a few hours later and there is the audio interface. I think I'm gonna keep it on top of the G4. I put it up there just for a little test, just to see what it was like, and it is looking good. It kinda reminds me, and I did this automatically based on nostalgia, it kinda reminds me of when I had my old setup about 10 years ago, nine, 10 years ago, Man, oh man, um, where my G4 was on the desk. That's the last time I had a G4 on the desk. And it was right up against the wall, or it was actually a piece of my bed, because uh, my bed was above my desk then. I'll put a screenshot so you guys know what I'm talking about um, from one of my older videos. But yeah, I had all this stuff on top of it. I had like an external hard drive. I think I had the router at one point, um, possibly my iPod up there as well. I seem to remember it being up there. But anyway, whatever was happening, um, this just reminds me of, of back then. The only bummer is this stuff isn't stacking nicely together. The super drive is a lot deeper than the interface, but I can't turn it this way because the cable's not long enough. I'm not sure if this works with the USB extension. It probably does just fine, so I could extend it. Um, the reason I say that is because the super drive is very fussy about its USBs. It only works in certain ports, and it's not just a Hackintosh thing. It's the super drive generally being super fussy and rubbish. It doesn't work with hubs or anything like that. It's one of the worst things I've ever bought, but for functionality, once you get it plugged in and recognized, it works great, so I can't really moan about that. And it's super small, it doesn't require external power, so whatever. Um, part of me would like to turn this entire thing around, so maybe we'll do that. And I need to get a longer cable for this, because what I'd like to do is have this sat alongside here on the interface, and you know, maybe turn these things around. I need a new iPod cable, look at that. That is one of my really old ones. Not really, really old, because it's got the smaller, less deep 30-pin connector, um, the plastic housing on the 30-pin connector, but yeah, look at the white difference between these cables. That's the iPod one, and that's my SuperDrive one. Absolutely crazy, and the SuperDrive isn't exactly new. Um, so yeah, I may turn that on its side, we'll see how it goes, but up there I think is where I'm going to have it, because even though the volume is a little far away, I can reach it comfortably from where I'm sat, but my arm is completely outstretched. Um, I'll be using the volume on the speakers, I think, and I rarely use headphones on this setup, folks. It's once in a blue moon, maybe once every three, four months, so that's okay. And another thing that I like is because obviously you plug in the XLRs on the front, if it's on the desk, I'm kind of going to have it here and it's going to be spewing cables from the front and the back and it might take away from the nice clean look of the floating G4, which I really love. I want to get some lighting under here. Not, you know, mega gaming PC style, but just a little bit of accent lighting just so it looks like it's kind of floating. I, I was meant to do that. I'm not sure if you guys remember, actually. Um, I had some LED strips on here. I don't know if I showed that during the Hackintosh series, the build series, um, because I ditched the idea for some reason. I can't remember what it was all about now, but um, yeah, I want to get some 
some strip lighting back here. Um, I could probably power it off the machine quite easily or power it off uh, USB. You've got plenty of free USB ports that don't work, but obviously they still give out power. Um, major, major ramble. I do apologize, folks. This is well and truly a classic IMNC ramble marathon. Um, but I think this is what you guys like, just me talking about my nerdy stuff. So let's go and look at some more nerdy stuff. Now we're talking. I rotated everything the other way so that it was all facing this way and it didn't look right. So I'm leaving it like that. I've got my main microphone plugged in and a secondary XLR cable that will go down and coil up underneath. And I'll put a hook under this corner. So whenever I need to put another microphone anywhere, I can just unhook that XLR and I've got it there. If I ever wanna plug in an instrument or a line input, I can just unplug this and just leave it dangle. Um, the editing drive, I've put strong Velcro so it now unvelcros from the top of the interface so that stays there it's way too light otherwise the cable just pulls it off i've changed it for a longer cable so even though there's a lot of mess at the back now um once all the cables are in i'll tidy all that up i've left enough slack on everything so that i can pull the machine forward to get to the cables easier ipod is sitting there super drive is sitting there and obviously because it's staying this way it reaches which is great um when I was going to turn it the other way, I dug out this Apple keyboard USB extension, um, which will probably work just fine. But yes, indeed. Oh, and as you can see, um, as I'm talking, it's registering on input one because I turned this phantom power switch on and my microphone is working. One thing I love about this interface is if I turn the gain all the way up and just click in front of the mic, look at that change in color. It goes orange and it goes red. It goes red for clipping absolutely lovely and it stays red a little while so that it, you know that you've clipped so it's really really intuitive um, you don't have to be looking at it closely to know your level I can look at it from a, a quite a distance and know exactly what's going on with my microphone so that's great and obviously my microphone takes phantom power so um, so does my other one actually my floater they're both condensers I have to say folks I know that at the moment with the lighting and everything it's not, you know, really, really great, but I'm getting a fantastic, fantastic feeling from this setup. I'm really liking it. I've just checked some emails and just been clicking around and um, I, I love it. I absolutely love it. It's really giving me that old school feeling, that old school 10 years ago feeling from when I started my channel and uh, had all these G4s floating around. You know, it's surprising, even though this hasn't been on the floor, just being down that level, wherever it was down there, out the way, it was enough for me to sort of not be able to see it, but up there, it is proud to be up there. So I am so pleased. I need to get some lovely lighting in here. Um, I don't know if you guys remember, I used to have something called a laser pod, and I really liked that thing. And unfortunately, after years and years of use, it broke. And I'm not surprised because it said it wasn't meant to be on for longer than X amount of hours. And I used to leave it on all day, every day, and all night, to be honest. It was on 24 hours a day. And um, that used to shine on the side of my Power Mac and look absolutely gorgeous. I may see if I can find one of those things, see if they still exist. Because um, it was a sick little piece of kit. And yeah, with, with all of this, it's just it's just giving me old school vibes. I love it, I really do. The keyboard is wrong, <laughs> I must admit. If it was a um, proper Apple keyboard up here, then that would be much better, but they just feel too horrible now. Can't go backwards. So it turns out that the LaserPod company seems to have completely disappeared, um, which is a massive shame. There's still like comments on YouTube videos from people that have purchased laser pods as late as 2013, 2014, it seems like. Um, but past then, there just seems to be no laser pod action whatsoever. I read up a little bit about it on Wikipedia, which is a translated article. Um, doesn't say if they went bust. And yeah, here's the one I had, the Orb base station, and it was a gift. I remember I wanted one way, way, way back, and it was a gift for Christmas of 2008 uh, from a very special friend, and it broke. I had it for years and years and years, and I had it behind my setup, and it it broke after a while. Um, and there's the box it came in. I remember the box. <laughs> I've actually got an old unboxing video of it somewhere. 
I definitely have that. I've seen it recently while I've been sorting out my data. It didn't go up on IMNC, it went up on my old channel. But yeah, there we go, I had the white one. Neat little thing, really cool. This one was cool because you could angle it, you could point it at stuff. It wasn't as strong or, or it wasn't as powerful as the the, the other ones they did. Um, and I've never really seen any coverage on this weird looking one on a stand. But yeah, there are obviously products like these available still. A lot of products sort of like gimmicky kind of um, Christmas slash random gift idea kind of products. Um, there's one that looks kind of similar to a laser pod on Amazon for 25 quid. And I actually remember that a few years after I got the laser pod, uh, probably 2012-ish, 2013, I got another laser light. Um, it was gifted from somebody else. And it was like a wannabe laser pod. It was, all, it was all right, but next to the laser pod, it was nothing. It really was weak. This is the bit of kit I'm talking about. It just looks... Um, actually looks really similar to the one that I had. Yeah, I don't think they're very good. But, you know, unless you've got... Ah, oh, it looks brilliant there, see? It looks really good. But unless you've got something to compare it to, maybe it looks great on its own. I don't know, I just think it's ugly. I wouldn't want the unit itself sat there. Uh, the beauty of the old one that I had was I shoved it behind my monitors and you couldn't see it. Uh, on at least when I had my corner desk. When I had my um, other desk, my first desk, it was just on the desk and it looked okay. Maybe this would look okay on it. I don't like the design. I don't like the design. I'd have a normal laser pod here sitting on the desk without a shadow of a doubt. I need some nice lighting in this room. It's getting desperate now. It is Thursday, October 4th, and I have everything I need. So the cable came a couple of days ago. I've opened it up, unwrapped it. Here it is. It's just a very basic um, TRS cable, two of them for stereo, nice labeling. Really, really nice feeling cables, lovely quality. Not too expensive, but really, really nice feeling. So happy with the cable and it's not too long either. Hopefully that'll be the perfect length. And much more excitingly than just a cable, we have the speakers. And check that out, guys. Look how tiny that box is, uh, you know, compared to those massive ones over there. So let's dig in. I have had a little nose. As you can see, the box is open. I just wanted to check everything was okay when they arrived. Here we've got the instructions and two little foam pad things that I assume you stick underneath. Uh, let's get into it. I know that this one is the passive one, so it's lighter, easier to pick up. Check that out. Very, very small. Very small, but still obviously huge for computer speakers. Um, so they're definitely going to have to go on their side like that. And even then, they only just they only just fit, really. Hopefully, it's not going to look too cramped up here. Uh, there's that one. We'll get out the heavier one. Ooh, the one with the amplifier in it, which actually isn't as heavy as I thought it was going to be. It didn't justify that noise I made anyway. So <laughs> there's that one. We'll take a closer look in a minute, folks. And here's the box of bits and bobs. Okay, what have we got? We have got a power cable, European power cable, figure of eight. So no good. We've got uh, what looks to be... Mini jack to phono, uh, mini jack to mini jack, and what else is in here? Oh, of course, the um, the speaker cable. Yeah, really thin, super, super thin. So I'm sure this is absolutely fine. Obviously, it'll work, but I'll use my own slightly thicker gauge speaker cable. If I'm doing a nice job of cable management and stuff, I can cut it exactly to length then as well. So that's nice. So here's the passive one. It is super, super light. Um, nice. Nice feeling speakers, not amazingly high quality feeling, but they feel, you know, nice enough. These are super cheap guys for a pair of speakers. And if they're as good as people say they are in terms of sound quality, then they're, they're an outstanding price. So I wouldn't expect them to feel completely bulletproof, but they certainly feel quality enough. Um, look at that, I've got hair on it already. They certainly feel quality enough. Uh, here we have our little speaker terminals, push springy ones, very small. Um, that's it for the passive one and then for the active one same thing but we've got a few more bits and bobs so here's the power switch the volume knob we've got a headphone jack on the front and we've also got an audio in 
so if you want to jack in a uh, mobile phone or iPod or whatever then that goes straight in the front uh, then on the back we have our output for the passive speaker now one thing that differs with this set of speakers is the Mackie ones that are in the same sort of class the C4 or I think they're C4s. They have a switch on the back that allows you to um, tell the system which speaker is on the left. So if you want the active one on the left, or if you want the active one on the right, then you can change it. But with this setup, they are, I believe this one has to be on the left. Yeah, you see output to right speaker. So thankfully that fits my setup because of course I want the active one on this side because that's where all my connections are and I can have the passive one on this side. It's not a mega bummer, but I, that's such a cool feature that the Mackie ones include. And of course, all it does is it switches the inputs. It just switches left and right. So really convenient. Um, on the back, what do we have? We've got some controls for the high and low. We'll put them somewhere in the middle. There's a little indentation in the middle. We put them in the middle for now. If we need to adjust anything, we can. We've got our quarter inch balanced inputs, our jack-ins, our... Uh, TRS connectors. There we go. Balanced connection without a shadow of a doubt. The only choice for long term use. That cable pretty much dwarfs this, <laughs> this speaker. And then we've got our unbalanced phono inputs or RCA inputs. Uh, so, yeah, really nice. And a figure of eight power connector on the bottom. Really simple. Uh, Let's see how they fit. It is quite a few days later and I am back working on this setup. I was probably in the middle of speaking about something, probably in the middle of speaking about the speakers, but we will speak about those more at the end. So apologies if the continuity seems a bit all over the place. Uh, I just can't remember what the last clip I recorded was and I've already imported it. So <laughs> ultimate laziness, but let's just carry on. Uh, I've just been working on some cable management and I am pretty pleased with what I've achieved. So we've got one bundle of cables coming back from this speaker, um, three cables in total, if you include these two jack, jack cables as one because they become one further on down the line. Uh, that just sort of crams its way in between these two desks. Not the most elegant solution, but I will be replacing this desktop and when I do, I will make sure everything fits properly and is much more elegant. Um, so that is to come. Uh, it looks neat for now, so that's okay. And then this is what I'm really proud of. We've got a snake coming down the back of the machine, which is similar to the snake that was coming down on my previous setup, um, with everything coming out at the point where it needs to come out and everything joining where it needs to join. So you've got the main bundle coming down from all the stuff on top, main, main bundle, everything goes down and then stuff loops around under there and comes back up. So I want to tidy up those loops a little bit because you can sort of see them. Um, I just need another Velcro tie just squashing everything down. But this is a really thick bundle, this bottom bundle there, um, because you've got some cables in there twice, such as this red one, it's the easiest to see. Um, coming down from the audio interface and then back up. So it's not crazy, crazy neat, but it's neat enough for me. Um, I'm quite happy with that, really. It looks good. It's got a nice sort of industrial look to it. When everything's tied back neatly like it is now, it just looks, it looks fine to me. Um, so next job is, I'm going to take some of these under with me because I'm going to begin right now, actually. Uh, next job is to... I had to strip back a little bit of my previous work to integrate some of the new audio cables. So I need to sort this lot out and I need to sort out the, the trailing speaker cable. So I want to run it in the cable management thing up here and cut it down to the exact length to make it appropriate for this setup. And then we are on the home stretch. I just need to tie a few more things up and, uh, and we're good to go. My cable management is complete and it is looking clean. So I'm gonna start at the bottom, we're gonna work our way up. You guys can see the pink ethernet cable that's coming along the edge of the terribly installed flooring. That's curling up and going up behind the leg along with these two power cables. That's right, I have this massive power tower and I'm only using two sockets. That's okay though, um, this provides surge, surge protection. There is no surge protection in this six way. So the two sockets are one for the computer, two for the six-way that is up there. So 
uh, I've got a little coil of excess there, nice and neat. Then I've got cable tied, those three cables up the leg. And then coming up here, this is where it starts to get really exciting. I've got my little three-way junction. So I've basically used, and I love these things. These are great. Um, they're basically like little adhesive uh, bits of plastic and you can loop through cable ties in any direction you want. And also, you want to look out for the ones that include screw holes. You can see there's two, in fact, whoops, yeah, there's one screw hole either side. Some of them have screw holes in the middle. Uh, have I got one of those as an example? No, these are all the same type. But they're absolutely brilliant. They beat these kind any day. They are much, much better because what you can do is you can bung a little screw through them. Just a tiny, tiny screw. Obviously, no deeper than the desk or whatever you're putting it into. Um, because one thing to watch out for with these IKEA desks is uh, this one's okay, it's actually a decent quality one, but some of the cheaper ones, if you put a screw in that's nearly as long as the desk, nearly as deep as the desk, sorry, it won't protrude through the top, but it'll start to bulge up the top layer, uh, the coating on the top. It, there'll just be a little bulge where you put a screw underneath and that's kind of like a rookie error. But um, yeah, they're great because you can plop them under the desk, stick them on. The adhesive is really good, so for single cable solutions like this, the adhesive tends to be absolutely fine. But if you're holding a big, big bundle of cable, then it's nice to put a screw through it. And I can just drive them straight into this desk. This desk is soft enough. I don't need any drills or anything. So really, really handy solution. So we've got one up there, one here, and one here. Obviously, we've got a little bit of a, a junctioning happening here. We've got the main coil coming down from the computer. That's as neat as I can get it. You've got some loop backs here going back up to the equipment on top. Um, that's in the little gap behind. So I will be able to push this desk right up against the other one and these cables won't uh, be in the way at all, which is great. You guys can see that the power cable and the ethernet cable is joining that bundle. Then obviously the power cable from this leg bundle is coming over to this lot. And this is the, the main core of cable going up to the computer, including the audio cable. So we've got the audio cable for the speakers and the audio cable for the microphones. Branching off here, we've got two little rogue thin cables going over to another one of these. And this is where the um, USB cable comes along as well. So. These are all USB hub cables, and the USB hub just sits here. As you guys saw, I stuck that on a little while ago in the video. And then we've got the cable management thing here. I still need to suck it in at the middle, but I was just waiting to finish everything because that's going to be a bit of an awkward job. So um, it's just to get enough space in there to uh, screw into the desk because of all those cables. Uh, the microphone cable is loosely tied to the bottom of the desk so I can pull it through if I want to move the position of the microphone. Uh, the position of the microphone stand, obviously there's enough cable on the microphone stand for me to move the microphone wherever I want, but just in case I wanted to slide the whole stand itself either that way or that way, so there's a little bit of uh, freedom there. And then we've got this spare XLR cable. Now what I'm going to have to do is find some kind of hook solution and eventually I want to hook it underneath somewhere really convenient, so in this neck of the woods somewhere, just so I can pull it out. And there's enough length to cover the whole room there, so if I ever want to put a floater microphone somewhere, I can. So coming out from underneath, I just want to show you guys... Oh man, it's a little bit cramped under there. I just want to show you guys how good it looks from the top. So we've got a bundle coming down from the speakers. Not crazy about that, but it, that's kind of the nature of this sort of setup. We've got a total of one, two, three, four, five places that cables come down off the back of the desk. I did think about marrying this cable to either this bundle or that bundle, but it didn't look right when I tried it. It was just kind of like stretching that way and stretching that way. And I thought with the... Um, cable management system being right here I may as well just tuck it under it makes no difference really um, I got a little bit of tidying up to do this needs a bit of tightening so I want to get less slack on that in the uh, in the underneath part here um, what else what else yeah it just looks generally pretty tidy and if you guys can get an idea of how it looks in the room you can't see well ignoring that XLR cable you can't really see any cabling um, this speaker cable is a bit shiny so I need to make sure that's tucked under some other cables to hide it and then if we go this side uh, yeah unfortunately I accidentally unplugged my system but as you can see my feet my feet area that's just all stuff on the floor no cables at all no cables protruding 
you can't see any cables it's only until you look right underneath that you can start to see the cable work uh, it's extremely neat no danger of getting tangled or caught or anything complete and utter freedom underneath the desk which I love apart from that dangling XLR um, but yeah that is basically the making of the setup. The setup is very, very, very nearly complete. It is the final clip. I've done another hour long video. Uh, apologies. Today is Sunday, October 21st, and I'm finally pretty much done. Let me just uh, mention a couple of things that I didn't mention. The speakers are in place. I cut out a load of the audio talk from this video because as always with audio it goes on far too long. I'll make a separate video about the audio system in the future. I need longer to get used to it anyway. Uh, but what I will say is these speakers, I've put the little included feet underneath them and they ended up being eight separate little square pads. Fantastic. Um, obviously designed to be put on the bottom, four of them, but I stacked all four on the front part of the speaker so they slightly tilt up and I get nearly a perfect angle. Uh, I'd like a tiny bit more of a tilt, maybe just a couple of mil, but it's not possible because they are flush actually touching the bottom of the monitor. Um, but for the most part, I'm very happy with that. Um, apologies for the awful lighting in this final clip. Lighting is another thing I want to mention. I need to sort out all the lighting. I need to run power to that softbox to make it usable again. I need to get some lighting here. I've decided that this space is dedicated to some kind of light. So whether I do find a laser pod, by the way folks, continuing the laser pod discussion, they're available on eBay and people bid on them. They, they're a little bit of a collector's item. They don't go for tons of money or anything, but little bit of a collector's thing so hoping to find either a laser pod or a lava lamp or something cool to put there that's going to look nice but as for the main setup it's completely done i showed you guys all of my cable management in the last clip let me see if i can just get a really nice shot of the desk let's put the microphone up there as well see if i can go back this is thumbnail stuff here folks maybe horrible lighting but whatever yeah, look at that. I'm very, very pleased. Obviously, I've still got the corner to sort out with the keyboard, but any changes to the setup, you guys will see them in future videos anyway. Now, not to sound like a massive advertisement, but I know I'm gonna get questions, uh, so I will mention that yes, I still have, apologies, just had to cover over some, uh, some letters there. Uh, yeah, I still have my audio equipment for sale, so I just wanna mention this super briefly. Uh, I've got the mixer, I've got the two Mackie speakers, the big 8-inch Mackie speakers. I miss them already. They were too big for the room, but damn, it's difficult to get used to tiny speakers again. It really is. I've got the speaker stands, I've got various cabling. I'm selling my Pioneer home theatre subwoofer. I'm also selling this audio rack, uh, the rack itself and the stuff within it. The power condition is a bit knackered though, so... I uh, wouldn't really go there, but what I'm trying to say is all of this stuff is available for purchase from myself. If anybody is interested in that stuff, I'm going to let it go pretty cheap. Um, I need the money to cover this new audio setup and I need it in general also. Uh, so I'm just going to be letting that gear go. I spent um, about two thirds of the money I'll get for that lot on the new audio stuff. So I've actually made money by upgrading my audio system. Well, it's like an upgrade downgrade. Uh, the the Mackie mixer is a very, very nice quality audio interface. Uh, the Focusrite interface is a lovely bit of kit. Um, they're sort of equal in quality, in my opinion. Um, but it's smaller, it's it's better for what I, I need. The speakers, it's going to be hard to adjust to them, but we'll talk about that in the future. If anyone wants to discuss a deal, then feel free to email me. Em email me directly at itsmanaturalcolor at gmail.com. I do check my emails a lot more regularly now. I'm back on it with uh, a managed inbox. So if anyone does want to discuss purchasing my audio gear, let me know. But I don't want to sound like a massive advert. I just wanted to put it out there because I have mentioned a couple of times in the video that I might put it on Facebook, might put it on eBay. Haven't done any of that yet and I want to see it go. So yeah, it's available. But anyway, I'm going to import this clip. I'm going to edit, export, job done because I want to get this video up for you guys. Uh, home networking video is progress is being made on that one. Uh, sort of simultaneously so this one is going to go out and I'm going to start working on my network again uh, very soon and you guys will be updated I promise I'm going to stop rambling as always I hope you've enjoyed the video folks it's been a long one I'll see you all again soon in another video